Who made a happiness resolution this year? Anyone made a New Year's resolution? Hands up. I did. Anyone else? How's it going? Hands up. Be honest. One of the most popular New Year's resolutions is be happier. Yet most New Year's resolutions fail by the end of February. And this time five years ago, I was certainly not happy. Not long before Christmas, my mom had passed away quite suddenly. And at the time, I was working on a project, <coughs> writing a book on happiness for Red Balloon, the online gifting retailer. And going through all the natural stages of grief, anger, denial, bargaining, I reached the depression stage. Writing a book on happiness was the last thing I wanted to do. And I expressed my struggles. It was suggested that if I just couldn't get on and be happy, well, someone else would write a book. But being happy isn't as easy as it advertised. Open a Coke, be happy. Or the songs, Don't Worry, Be Happy, Pharrell Williams, Happy Now, you're ringing in your head now. Lose weight, marry someone who looks and behaves like Hugh Jackman. <laughs> well, you know, happy. These are all things we're told can make us happy. You might stay up there for a while. <laughs> now, our economy is geared up for it. Advertising brands want to be associated with smiling, laughing, happy customers. Positivity has shown to increase sharing and engagement on social media. We see happy, we connect with it, and we say, yes, I want that. The mistake is, we think that something, happiness is something that we can pursue. <coughs> if I pay off my debts, I'll be happier. Get that red dress, I'll be happier. Have a cleaner house. By the way, no one lies on their deathbed saying they wish they'd spent more time cleaning. <laughs> C.S. Lewis of Narnia fame once described suffering as God's megaphone. And for me at the time, grieving for my mom, I was very aware of what I was experiencing internally. To go off and find happy externally seemed to make a mockery of what I was feeling in here. It made no sense to look at happiness as an external pursuit. If sad was in here, then happiness, its opposite, must be in here too. Proverbs 15.13 says this, A miserable heart means a miserable life. A cheerful heart fills the day with song. So how do we go about encouraging our hearts to be cheerful? I'm going to quickly go through some good daily habits and then expand on one area I think gets insufficient attention. So number one, take a daily thank you walk. Feel blessed and you won't be stressed. It's what you pay attention to that grows. So what are you giving thanks for every day? Number two, talk to yourself. And not that naggy, unkind voice we can too often use. Remind yourself of the lovely truth about yourself. Me, I came to a faith in Jesus just a few fast years ago, and it really gave me a new perspective on how to talk to myself. In the Bible, God tells me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and that his works are wonderful. Who am I to disagree with God? <laughs> so when you talk kindly to yourself, when you share God's perspective on yourself, that you are one of his wonderful works, there's an immense amount of love and happiness that comes with that. Number three, get more sleep. Great night's sleep <laughs> cannot be replaced by a double latte. Number four, don't waste your energy on negative things. Gossip, your past, stuff you can't change. Forgive yourself and others, admit your mistakes, and ask forgiveness of others too. Love, serve, and care. For centuries, the greatest thinkers have suggested the same thing. Happiness is found in helping others. Jesus said it is better to give than to receive. And through MRI technology, we now know that giving activates the same parts of the brain that are stimulated by food and sex. Experiments show evidence that altruism is hardwired in our brains, and it's pleasurable. Now you don't need me to give you the five steps or ten top tips to daily happiness. You've got Google for that. I actually did it for this talk. I googled how to have a happy life. I go about 14 articles per page, and by page 18 of Google, I stopped pressing next. But there were plenty more. Hundreds, if not thousands of articles, on how to be happy. But we're not. 
In any one year, around a million Australian adults have depression, and over two million have anxiety. I suffer from it, and I'm sure everyone here knows at least one person, and it's on the rise. So for all the self-help articles, for all the hints and tips I can give you, keeping a be happy resolution, if you look at the statistics, is hard. Or are we looking at it the wrong way? What if it isn't about self-help? You see, for all those articles I googled, the one thing I noticed, Jesus didn't pop up once. He didn't get a mention as a way to happiness. And yet those five tips I just shared, they could all be traced back to Jesus, even getting more sleep. Like the time in Mark 4, he and the disciples are in the boat, there's a massive storm, Jesus is fast asleep in the bottom, the disciples are panicking, how can you sleep? We're going to die. How can you sleep? He sleeps because he's assured of his Father in heaven. Sleep, prayer, thankfulness, forgiveness, these are ways of happiness. They are all ways that Jesus modeled, not because of self-help, but because of his trust and the love of his Father in heaven. And that's the same for all of us. It's not about self-help, but God's help. And the Bible has plenty in it about happiness, but it defines it differently than what we hear from our culture. The happiness the Bible advocates isn't dependent on circumstances. The words for blessed, blessing, in both Old and New Testaments mean well-being, flourishing, happiness. It is used throughout the Psalms and Proverbs to describe the happy state of those who live wisely according to God's design. Now, four years ago, I wasn't a Christian. In fact, I'd done the self-help New Age thing for over a decade. Courses, crystals, books. I even went to a church that channeled an alien. You name it, I tried it. Searching for happiness. There was always another course, always another book. And then I met Jesus. And may I say, I have never been happier. Augustine, one of the great early church theologians, and fairly wild bloke before he met Jesus, said a lot of fairly fantastic things. This is one. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts find no rest until they find their rest in you. In Jesus, I find rest, peace, contentment, happiness, no matter what the external world throws at me. And unlike that external pursuit of happiness, God says, stop. God says, you don't have to do the work to be happy. No, I'm pursuing you. I love every hair on your head. I sang over you as you knit together in your mother's womb. With God's love and gift of Jesus, there are no rules to get right, no external things to chase, no ladder of rights and wrongs you have to climb up to reach God. Instead, in Jesus, you meet the God who came down the ladder, pursuing us. He became human, lived a sinless life we could not, died the death we deserved, and rose again. All this, all this, in order to ensure a close, forgiven relationship with us. Through faith and grace, nothing else. And being loved like that, being redeemed by that, no matter what, gives you an incredible blank canvas each day of love, trust, and happiness. Jesus died and overcame death for me and all of you so we could all be in right relationship with God. And that is where true happiness and flourishing comes from. A lovely friend said to me recently after she got to know Jesus, Phil, it sounds mad, but even the trees sing greener. <laughs> it's not mad. It's the right order of things. A relationship with God through Jesus means we flourish. And when we flourish, happiness is a natural byproduct. Psalm 1 tells us in relationship with God, we are like trees planted by streams of water bearing fresh fruit, always in blossom, happy. I want to close with something that Jesus said that resonated strongly with me when I was seeking happiness. You see, we put so much effort in trying to achieve happiness, we can just end up exhausted. Jesus said this in Matthew's Gospel, and I'm using a more modern message, as it really speaks to how harried we can become pursuing happy. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. 
I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So if you're tired out by this pursuit of happiness and you like the idea of blossoming, flourishing with ease, of keeping a New Year's resolution to be happier without the stress and the effort, please feel free to find me one of the breaks and ask me some questions about my own happiness journey and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.